it may sound like it's just a bunch of talk, but if you guys ever come in the office and see when this guy walks in, you always come in with a smile, you make it a point to say hey to everyone, and you're always just leading with that positive energy. Favorite dessert? Um, for me? Oh yeah. my gosh, you've seen me eat desserts. It's not my favorite. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Knowledge is Power. You know the drill. Before we get started, click those two buttons below, the like and subscribe. You're not going to want to miss all the content we have coming out. Tips, tricks, whether you're buying, selling, investing, or renting, we're here to help you out. But with no further ado, I'm super pumped. I'm here today with my man, McDeezy, as some may know him. Tom McDevitt, what's up, dude? Not much, Jason. Thanks for inviting me. I see it every week. Knowledge is power. Do you actually watch it? Yeah, that's yeah. why I didn't think you called me, because knowledge is power. I wasn't <laughs> ready, right? But um, no, I'm excited. Life experiences are knowledge, though, right? That I tell everyone on the team, you know, as a senior member of this team, senior and I mean member. senior member, um, yes, we tell them all. We try, right? So, Tom, tell everyone really quick, kind of... Where you live, where you service, what brought you, just tell us who you are. Sure, so again, so my name's Tom McDevitt. I've been with the team two years now. I've also been in real estate two years. I spent 35 years in the automotive industry, retired, was bored. So I said, what can I do that I won't be bored? So I chose real estate. No boredom in real estate. <laughs> I was just gonna ask that. None. So I live in Billerica. Um, I take care of Billerica, Chelmsford, Westford. Um, I do a lot around here, and that's sort of my base. Nice. And then outside of real estate, you do a lot with the community as well. Do you want to talk about community caregivers? Sure, we can. So, um, so we have a. We're in a position now where we can help others. So we have a charity now. You say we? Who else is involved? So my in wife. Um, Deb, shout out. Right. Hi, hon. I didn't get a haircut. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. <laughs> Surprise me. But anyway, so what we did is um, when COVID started, we needed something to do. We wanted something to do that would help others. So my daughter's getting ready to go to Harvard. She thought we're going somewhere else. But so we started Community Caregivers, which is a charity that we help seniors. Uh, we pick up medicine, bring them food. We have people that will go to their house, help them with little repairs, cut the grass, things like that. Awesome. You said you started this during COVID? We did. Okay. So it took off though. Like we started with just a few people and we could not believe it just took off. So there's a ton of volunteers in our town in Bill Ricca that help. They're excellent. Um, so yeah, it's pretty incredible. And what, I mean, obviously COVID kind of created it, but what kind of flicked the switch where you and Deb were like, we have to create this. Like, what was the passion behind charity and specifically for seniors? So I think my wife's background was, is she's a geriatric case manager, so she's worked with the elderly for a long time. So she had that sort of background and we knew we could help out. I love it. Um, and my daughter is going to be a nurse and my other daughter is going to be a teacher. So everyone's sort of- How old are your two daughters again? They're 21 and 17. That's, That's amazing little... to have them involved in that though, so young. And they work all the time. Like they can't just say they have the, they're out delivering Thanksgiving. We delivered stuff to the first oh, yeah. responders. So yeah, we keep That's awesome. Moving. And it's honestly kind of the perfect correlation for you with real estate because you're we're like, we were just talking, you're always all about service first, right? Like give us some examples or, you know, what about you, I guess, makes you different as a realtor? So I really think that it's because I, I truly care, right? I'm sure that there are a million realtors that say, oh, I care about you, you're great, blah, blah. Bullshit. Um, sorry, Spence, we'll cut those later. <laughs> Anyways, I really do care, right? Yeah. Because I get to know what you want, right, Jason? You just tell me two bedroom, this, that, I wanna live in Bill Rick. Well, there's way more to it. People come to Westford because they wanna be in Westford. So you need to understand that. And, and I feel I do a good job. Yeah. And I try to get to know everything you want. I don't waste your time by sending you to seven houses that won't work. And yeah. then we work together. I love it. And your numbers have grown every year. Like you've been a consummate just student, right? You're always looking to learn. What's one of the things now that you've been into it for two years, going on three, that is, you know, not what you expected? In a good, so first in the, First, the hottest thing that no one ever told me is, especially in this market, is you have to be the bearer of bad news sometimes and tell people, right? Yeah. No one, when I took my real estate exam, said you're calling like, oh, sorry to give you the bad news. But turning that around, we're prepared from the beginning. When we first meet, we know 
you, me, whoever you're buying with, whatever, we know right from the beginning. So I feel like that, maybe that's a life experience, yeah. right? You're prepared from day one. So you're never, when you're in the process and we're looking at homes, you're, you're never, you're always ready. So right. I think that makes a big difference and I feel like you really can. Okay. And, you know, aside from being able to, you know, show houses and get accepted offers and deliver the bad news, if you were to give any advice to a brand new agent, you kind of just did, right? What's one piece of advice you'd give to somebody who is taking the course or thinking of becoming a real estate agent? What would you tell them? Just one thing. Join a team. <laughs> oh my gosh. So listen, I'm going to tell you, right? Yeah. I personally, when I got into this, if I, I feel if I was a solo, solo agent, I would have struggled and not known what to do. If you come to a team, and of course our team, but come to a team, you learn, right? And being part of the team, you're never out there sort of alone, right? As a new realtor, you feel alone. You feel like, who's helping me? But you don't feel that way when you're part of the team, right? There's always someone you can call. There's always someone that will help you with the offer if you have questions. Things when like did that. you actually join? What month? What year? It was um, October of... 19? Yeah. October 19. I got my license. So on right the before COVID really became a it thing. It did. I got my license like on the 8th and I was here like on the 14th and um, we we're cruising along and then COVID hit and the whole thing just changed. Because you started with Amy, right? Yeah. You started with Amy and, and Rui and Chelsea and that whole group. Correct. And then like now still like Laurie. Yeah. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of us that were all together. But now it's pretty cool is I'm seeing a lot of agents that we've sort of brought into the fold and we've helped in the fold and they're so all just man. crushing. Well, and you, I mean, you know, you hear two years and you know, you might think I'm still kind of new into this, but I mean, you've been helping coaching new agents like Mike Labo and Peter Malarkey. I mean, you've been helping people and you're only two years into it. I mean, how does that feel? So I love that part of it, right? That's a huge piece for me is to help. That's part of the team, right? Mm -hmm. You can help people every day. Like for example, there was an agent in here a little while ago. I feel like he was a little down. But you come in and you talk to us and you talk to everyone in the team and you, you realize you, you're just everyone fine. supports everyone. Um, but you can learn, even from new agents, right? 100%. You can learn. But it's great to help them because when they go out, they know what they're talking about and, and it's all part of the fun. Yeah. So real estate aside, we're not going to talk about real estate the whole time. Right. You used to the Spartan race, you Spartan oh warrior. Oh my gosh, right? So what a month, right? So I turned 61. Just a number. So we did the spot and race, right? Fenway Park, we all crushed it. It was phenomenal. What was the hardest obstacle for you? Um, the rings. Really? Yeah, like I just, I felt like I couldn't reach across, but the okay. rest of it was pretty cool. And I've never seen Fenway from the field. Um, so you could run around. It was a really yeah. great time. Was it harder than you thought it would be or not as bad? No, so I made it a lot harder in my head. Um, like I, I, so I, I work out all the time, right? But just work out, but not train like this. So we right. had like a three week notice. So for three weeks, you know, like my partner in crime, Christy, same thing. Little right? biceps, Christy. Well, we, you know, we stepped up our game. So it was harder to train for it than actually do the event. What do you mean? Oh, like the training yeah, you did my was training, harder I than... was like, I would leave the gym and could barely walk going down the stairs. But after the race, we all went for lunch. We had a great time. I love it. No one was in any pain. I got a big, uh, Metal, metal, metal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've done the Sparta. You do another one? Yeah, I think we're gonna go um, for the summer and try that one. Where is that? Well, Matt Brownrick, another agent on our team, does a lot of them. There's yeah. one in Vermont. I think he's done like a handful. Yeah, of them. he used to work the events, so he was yeah. sort of giving us information too. So it helped for all there of us. Go. Yep. And um, I think we'll try one this summer. All right. See what happens, because they give you three pieces. Oh no way! Yeah, there's a little. I should have brought it for the camera, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> There's a little thing, so you make another one. So That's cool. So you have cool. and all the others. Very cool. It was a great time. All right. So you're big on teamwork and helping each other, right? What do you do big time? Like, what's really important to you outside of real estate, outside of here? What else do you spend your time doing? Um, all right. So I guess my family is my most important, right? Yeah. Um, but also, so we have two dogs. They require a lot, right? They're great. Um, so, you know, my wife and I walk the dogs. We ride our bikes. So I like to mountain nice. bikes. So we ride our bikes. Um, the kids are, again, we're picking colleges right now. That's so crazy. So a lot of it is. Where are they looking? Uh, so Kaylee's, right now, Kaylee's number one choice is Endicott. Anyone Let's go. Anyone in Endicott. Um, but she's going to be a... 
She wants to be a nurse, you said? Probably a doctor at the end of the day, wow. a surgeon, but she'll start as a nurse, nurse practitioner, and then we'll go for her. Yeah, yeah. Someone so will take care of you. Yeah, yeah baby, <laughs> we're go. on the same page. Take care of the father. That's the deal. <laughs> and so going into 2022, do you have a goal set for next year? So I do. So um, in my first year, I helped 15 families. Huge. This year, I'm going to be in the mid 20s, probably low 20s, end of the day. So I want to grow my business again. I'm in a position where we're helping other people as well. So I'm not, I don't have to go out and do a hundred million and <clears throat> do all these things, but I do have goals. I have two girls in college. So yeah. obviously we're going to get that stuff. So I'm hoping to get, you know, pretty unbelievable year and get more plaques. More plaques. There you more go. Plaques. And so you're licensed only mass for now. Correct. You think you're going to jump the border? Or? Yes. So are you? Yeah, so we've already started, I think you are part of that circle. There's a group that we're all going to work this winter at getting certified, I mean, New Hampshire license, so Love that we that. can jump the border. I don't want to drive to the lake, right? Well, I would if you invited me, right? I go on a listing appointment on the <laughs> lake. There you go. But, you know, to be able to help my clients who are maybe torn between lol drink it and maybe they want to slip over the border and, and be able to help them yeah, or someone selling down here and looking to buy mm -hmm. right just over the border or vice versa you want to be I able to i want to be able to do both so correct that is part of the plan all right so increase your business new hampshire license what's a personal goal next year um so the one was the i think the spotting um is a personal goal and just to keep doing what we're doing you know okay. I mean, I live a great life. I do. worked hard to get here. And when I'm you leave with I'm gratitude, I give you a lot of credit for that. So I agree. So there's, so I don't know if I was that way when I was 25 years old. I was probably not. But in my life today, that's not how I am, right? Um, I just think it's better to be grateful and to help people and not expect stuff right. and everything will come back. Well, when you do the right thing, I mean... You always get the right result, regardless of what you had planned out, and it might not come immediate, but you've seen firsthand it always comes. And you're just a good freaking person. Correct. It always comes. hundred percent. And I think you put out that good comma, and it certainly helps. And and I get it. Like, you, if you're a person and you want to sell your home, you have a million real estate agents you can choose from, right? But if you meet me, like I'm who I am. There's no. You don't get, there's no two versions. Well, right? I give you massive credit for that because you've been in sales in the car industry and right. you've seen a lot and you've done a lot. I think throughout all of that, I mean, you've learned really who you are and you're so true to yourself. And, you know, it may sound like just a bunch of talk, but if you guys ever come in the office and see when this guy walks in, you always come in with a smile. You make it a point to say hey to everyone and you're always just leading with that positive energy. And it, it hugely impacts everyone around you inside and outside of the office. I think it makes you who you are right and I'm gonna have to agree I feel like I don't want to be that negative person there are plenty of negative people especially in today's world right well you come across me you're not gonna get that and so how do you do that right because you have shitty days too I bet so we do right yeah so I think about that like sometimes how does the motivator get motivated right but there's always a way like I personally think about things in the past that have happened to me that I don't want to relive, right? And, and if you know my past, some of them weren't great, whatever, but I know and I've learned from that that I don't want to go back there. Yeah. And I think if I come out and I'm shitty, I do what's, I do a restart, right? I'll go back in the house, I'll have a second cup of coffee, or whatever, but I try to focus my day, like I, the dogs wake me up at six because they want to eat. Yeah. I go to the gym, right? I start my day fresh. I'm positive. I'm good to go. Yeah. I have structure, most of it. Um, well, as much as you can in a real right. estate world, right? Um, the structure. But that's how I get through my day. And I surround myself with people that are like-minded. So I don't... So some of my best friends were shitheads, right? And I love them all. They were wonderful people, but I cannot hang out with them because that's not the direction of my life. Yeah. I'm, so I... Surround myself with like-minded people. I was watching a podcast this morning, and it was all about how, you know, we are some of the people we choose to spend our time with. And one of the quotes was, show me your five best friends, and I'll show you your future. And, like, that just made me really keep on thinking, like, when I was 21, 22, 23, if I showed you my five best friends, you would have not thought that my future is what it is, <laughs> right? And not they were bad people, right? right? But we just made bad decisions together. And I think it's so true looking back today that, you know, if I show you the five people I spend the most of my time with, it's my wife, it's Lisa Chinati, it's 
agents on this team, right? Spencey behind the camera and like yeah. spending my time with you guys, we're all like-minded. And I think that's, for me, it's just, it was so eye-opening because you don't think about it. Often. Right, and it's just important because you don't want to be, you want success in your life and if everyone around you is successful, you're going to just get it. It happens. By, right, it just happens. Right, and one of my other favorite quotes, and I think this relates to you, is that you can have anything you want in life if you just help someone else get what they want. Right. So I agree, and I think that's part of, too, why we have this charity and everything that we do, right? We give, 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 but everybody gives back, and, and there's sure. no it's no drama. It's just very good if everyone's helping out a little, and I yeah. think it makes better for me, makes better for everyone. Exactly. And I think at the end of the day, again, you realize we're legit when you see us. Right. I love that the whole family's involved, too. That's so I love nice. that part. And then, so my other daughter, so the one that's, we're working on her real estate license. So we'll Yeah, I remember you brought her in well. probably a year ago. So we'll bring her, yeah, she's been going, she works. So we'll, we'll get her into the fold, nice. so we'll have more. Does she want to be a real estate? She does she want wants to, to be part of it. More, I think, to help her father, but we'll see. That will be a cool little tactic, a good way to spend bad, time. Right. Right, it would be great. And she can do some of the stuff that I don't have time to do. She might end up falling in love with it, or parts of it, right? I mean, there's so many other roles within the company that if she comes in and says, you know what, I don't want to be an agent, but I love this side of it, whether the ISA or the admin side or whatever, like there's so many opportunities if it's what she wants. Right, and I think that as our company grows, which I notice is, you know that everyone I see in the office has either been an agent or had the opportunity, and then they said, oh wait, I want to do this, so, but they're all still here. Right. And it makes it great because when you talk to them for like a transaction coordinator and there used to be an agent, they understand everything that you're going through. Even if they can't do what you want them to do because that's not how it goes, right? right? But at least they understand you. Right, well and even Deanna in marketing, right? Being an agent for you know six, eight months, whatever it was, she now knows what to market for you guys as agents. It's right. perfect. And that's been working really well. I'm not gonna lie, you'll get people that seem to have lost interest or not searching as much, but they're getting all this content from us and they're still active and it brings them up, so right. it's nice. No, the contribution. So we're gonna do a little quick shift. So McDevitt, last meal on earth, what is it? Uh, lobster. Lobster, how, how would you have it cooked? I like just regular boiled lobster. Regular yeah, lobster. like a, so I like a New England clam bake and yeah. I laugh. So everyone in my house, no one eats seafood, so <laughs> I haven't had it in forever, but I grew up in a home that you ate seafood, so uh, New England clam bake would probably be my big one. All right. Even Deb doesn't eat it? No. No, no one, way. No one, buddy. They don't even let me bring it in my house because it smells. <laughs> That's so, amazing. No, yeah, but now, okay. when it comes down to it, would you rather take salty food or sweet food when you're craving? Um, sweet. Sweet? Yeah. All right, favorite dessert? Um, for me? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you've seen me eat desserts. There's not one favorite. There's not one favorite. True, there you do love so donuts, muffins. This is, this is how it is. There are some that are better than others, yeah. but they're all good. But they're so, all good. Right, so you know, I, I'll go with some cupcakes that are good. All right. Like a little chocolate cupcake, a little white for us. To oh, make. there There's you go. No, no bad choice there. <laughs> no bad it's choice. It's always glass half full. I freaking it love it. has to be though, and again, you know, if you've lived a long time and you've made poor choices, you look back at those poor choices and don't make them again, and your life can be outstanding. The past only predicts the future if you don't change. You have to change. You have to change. It's that whole insanity thing they talk about. You and me both, dude. <laughs> changing every day. Changing every day. I love it. So, Tom, obviously it's important to you to be who you are. What would you tell, you know, the market's crazy right now. It's still, I mean, would you agree it's still pretty crazy yes, for so buyers? I, I agree, yes. So what would you tell someone who's going to, if their goal is to buy a home in 2022, what's one or two pieces of advice you'd give them, whether to get started or as they start? So a lot of what I do is first-time home buyers and veterans. Um, that's just where I can give the most back, right? So we're coming in prepared. Like, we can go out and look at homes right now, Jason, just to get a feel for what you like, open kitchen, this, that, and the other. Right. But when you're at that step where we're ready, you need to have your pre-approval in place. We need to make sure you, all your funds are good and we're ready at that point. So preparation is key. Because you got to act quick is, sometimes. Right? Fast. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're ready, and, and you don't always aren't ready right at the beginning because you don't know what you don't know, right? Right. I'm a buyer and I click on a, a thing, a home on our page. 
I don't know this 400 steps that go to me just zoning right. that home, right? So I take it slow, I'll give you what you need and we'll work together and that's how it goes. But that's my advice is you prepare and be ready. Right. right. On average, how many homes would you say you're showing someone before they either find the right one or win on one, do you know? So, so to show them, we're probably, on average, we're looking at anywhere from six to 12 homes All right. to look at. Yeah. But half of those we're probably put offers on. So depending on the market, like for example, Westford, Chelmsford, there are multiple offers on every single home unless it's a horrible home, yeah. right? And then it sits. But so you, those homes were ready. You know what I mean? Multiple right. offers, you just have to be ready to go. Well, and that's where you get creative too. Like we were just talking, it's not always just price, it's terms as well, right? Correct. It's, there's so much that goes into it. And I think that if you work well, so the biggest thing, and I'll share this, is you need to work well with the listing agent, okay? I don't care how much money a client has, this and the other. If you butt heads with that listing agent, it's no go. So from day one, you get along with that person, you both want the same thing, but then it comes down to terms, it's not all about money. I just told you I had one where 100 grand over, but we're putting up a lot of money as an appraisal buffer because just going over isn't gonna make the deal. Right, and if someone else is higher than you without that buffer, that offer's not as good, so you're actually setting your buyers up to maybe pay a little bit less, but still have a stronger offer. Correct, and that's what it's about. It's all about how you structure it and keep it as simple as you can for the listing agent. Yeah. I love what they love. love I don't want to be work too hard. So 2022, another Spartan race. Yeah. Growing your business, growing the charity. What do you want to leave us with for words, Tom? What would you leave the viewers with? Um, So you'll see more of me. So when you're, I have to, you know, Jason's my sales manager too, right? Him and Mandy are on me a little about doing more videos. So you'll see me more on the video. That million dollar smile. Yeah. So, and look for me on somewhere else. Tom the Realtor on um, Instagram. We were were yesterday. Tommy the Realtor, right? Tommy the Realtor. Tommy the Realtor. See, you'll see me soon. I love it, dude. Hey, Tom, you're the man. Love you, brother. Thanks, Jason. Knowledge is power, out. Thank you.